Keep track of your points and check your results at the end of the test. Do you like playing tricks on people? A. Yes, but only my close friends. They know I don't mean it. B. Everyone all the time. C. Never. I'm afraid to hurt their feelings. D. Only if they play tricks on me. If you picked option A, you just earned 20 points. If you went with B, add 40 points to your basket. Those who chose C earned 10 points, D is worth 30 points. Which of these animals do you associate yourself with? A. Panther. I'm also posh, fast, and can always protect myself. B. Cute puppy. I wouldn't survive a day without my family. C. Kangaroo. I'm one of a kind and you can't approach me easily. D. Chameleon. I can fit into any surroundings. All panthers out there get 20 points. Puppies at heart can add 10 points to their score. Kangaroos scored 30, and chameleons got 40 points. If you turned into a superhero, what would you do first? A. Save the world. B. Travel the world. Being a superhero involves flying, right? C. Meet my favorite celebrity. D. Use my superpowers to produce as much money as I've always wanted. Option A brings you 30 points. B is worth 20. C is worth 10 points. D gives you 40 points. It's your birthday, and your friends surprise you with your dream car. How long will you be happy about it? A. A week, perhaps, until the joy fades away. B. Forever. It's the gift of a lifetime. C. It's no big deal. It takes way more than that to make me happy. D. I won't accept it. It's too much, and they know it. If you picked A, add 20 points to your score. If you went with B, it's worth 10 points. C brings you 40 points and D, 30 points. What's your favorite kind of weather? A, beach weather, sunshine, no clouds, heat. B, I love snow. Playing outside or staying at home on a snowy day makes me happy. C, rainy weather. The sound of it helps calm me down. D, extreme weather. Thunderstorms, tornadoes, sandstorms, they make life more interesting. If you prefer sunshine, add 20 points to your basket. Snow fans earn 10 points. Rain fans get 40 points. Those who love extreme weather earn 30 points. What movie would you choose to star in? A. Drama. I know how to play it because I live it. B. My sense of humor and irony will help. C. Superhero movie. I even know what my superhero costume will look like. D. I want to star in a detective movie and solve mysteries. Option A brings you 20 points. B is worth 10 points. C brings you 30 points. And D is worth 40 points. How do you feel before an important event? A. Nervous and scared. I don't want to let anyone down. B. Excited. I love to test myself and triumph. C. Calm and focused. That's what helps me always win. D. Useless. I always feel like others are putting more in it. If option A is your choice, you get 10 points. Would you rather go with B? It's worth 30 points. C brings you 40 points. D is worth 20 points. What activity would you like to exclude from your routine for good? A. Washing, drying, and brushing my hair. It's a waste of time. B. Having to pick my outfits. Let a robot do it for me. C. Cooking. It's definitely not my thing. D. Cleaning. Things turn into a mess again too soon. If 
If option A sounds like the way to go, give yourself 10 points. If B is your choice, you just scored 30 points. In case you went with C, add 40 points to your basket. Finally, D brings you 20 points. Which sense do you rely on the most? A. Smell. I could create my own perfumes. B. Hearing. I can hear someone whisper across the street. C. Sight. They say I have eyes on my back. D. Taste. It has never let me down. If you went for sense of smell, you get 40 points. Those who trust their hearing get 10 points. If you have an eagle eye, award yourself with 20 points. Your sense of taste brings you 30 points. You're arranging a first date with someone you really like. What is it going to be? A. I'll rent a movie theater or a planetarium just for the two of us. B. I'll cook some fancy food and learn to play some musical instrument. C. I'll take them to an escape room and let them show how smart and brave they are. D. Huh? I don't arrange dates. Others try their best to impress me. Option A brings you 10 points. B gives you 30 points. Option C is worth 20 points. If you chose option D, here are your 40 points. What do you do when you're angry? A. Ignore everything and everyone. I need some time to cool down. B. Read my favorite book or listen to some music. C. Cry my heart out. It helps me restart my system. D. Think it over. I gotta understand what made me so angry and how to avoid it. Option A adds 40 points to your basket. Option B gives you 30 points. C is worth 10 points. And D is worth 20 points. Your friend's having a housewarming party. What do you bring to it? A. Some food or something else practical will do. B. I'll write a poem or make a fun collage and frame it to make it memorable. C. I'll just ask them what they need for the new house. D. Hmm. Nothing. My presence is the best gift. In case you chose option A, give yourself 10 points. B adds 30 points to your score. C is worth 20, and D is a 40-point option. What time do you usually go to bed? A. 10 p.m. 11 p.m. at latest. I keep it healthy. B. 2 a.m. or so. And then I wake up around 2 p.m. C. What is sleep? I never get any. D. 8 p.m. I need my beauty sleep. Healthy sleepers get 40 points. Night owls get 30 points. Those who never sleep win 20 points. Those who go to bed early get 10 points. Which of the following sounds like the absolute worst idea to you? A. Never leaving my hometown for the rest of my life. B. Doing all the work and watching others get promoted. C. Have someone else pick my hairstyle for me. D. Never knowing my schedule. I can't live without a good plan. Those who went with option A get 30 points. Option B is worth 40 points. C brings you 20 points. D is worth 10 points. Pick a color combination you'd never get tired of wearing. A. Black and white. I'm classy. B. Gray and pink. Official with a playful twist. C. Orange, purple, emerald with a sprinkle of blue. I dress brightly. D. Stripes, polka dot, paisley. It's not about colors, it's about patterns. In case you chose option A, add 40 points to your score. B brings you 10 points. C brings you 30 points. D is worth 20 points. Time to sum up your points. If you ended up with 150 to 230 points, your hidden superpower is invisibility. You can always disappear from an event you don't like smoothly. 
If you don't want anyone to notice you at a lecture or a business meeting, they never will. Did you get 240 to 330 points? Congrats, you have the superpower of flying. You're doing things way faster than other people. Sometimes they ask you to share your secret of being here and there at the same time. You fly from place to place and are never late. You're always the first to try out a new trend and visit a new place. In case you scored 340 to 420 points, you're a super brain. You're one of the smartest people around. You can figure out the solution to any problem in a matter of seconds. When life gets too easy, your brain gets bored. You have an excellent sense of humor and irony. You like to plan things, and your plan always works out. Those who got 430 to 510 points, you have the superpower of reading minds. You have a lot of friends and make new ones easily. You always feel when something's wrong with them and know exactly how to help. You can also make others change their mind if it's in your interest. If your final score is 510 points or more, you're a money magnet. You never run out of it. The second you realize you could use some more cash, opportunities make it float your way. You know how to save and how to spend money. Hey there! Are you ready to get your mind blown by some absolutely stunning optical illusions? Or do you want to check how easily your mind can get tricked? Then watch our 11 optical illusions and let me know which impressed you the most. So here's the first one. Look at it attentively. What do you see here? Most people are sure they're looking at a 3D sphere on a patterned monochrome background. Or maybe you even feel that the ball is suspended in the air in front of some flat surface. In reality, this is a 2D image. The illusion occurs because of how the elements of the pattern are placed. Another 3D image which is actually totally flat. I don't know about you, but it seems to me that I'm looking at sand dunes colored in a dazzle of zebras. But no, this effect occurs thanks to the different thickness and position of the stripes. Now, look at this picture. Don't take your eyes off of it even for a moment. See? The circles are moving. It's a popular motion illusion. One of the coolest things about it is that it grinds to a halt if you look at only one part of the image. Try it out! And if you start looking around, it begins to move again. Is it magic? These circles might look simple and unassuming at first, but try moving your head back and forth while keeping your focus on the dot in the center of the image. Do you see that the circles formed by the rhombi start to rotate? When you're tilting your head towards the screen, they move in one direction. When you get farther from the image, they move in the opposite direction. And isn't that cool? How about something even more baffling? Look at this image. This grating is moving vertically, right? Not really. It's moving diagonally. This illusion occurs when a diagonally striped pole rotates horizontally around its vertical axis. To the viewer, it appears as though the stripes are moving downward rather than around the pole. Why so? Because you see the pole through a vertical window, which provides you with very little information about what's actually happening to it. Look at this beauty! Doesn't this kinetic illusion make you feel as if the image is both streaming, shimmering, and moving all at the same time? But the picture is actually a bunch of lines of the same color coming from the common center. The next illusion you're going to see is beautiful. The longer you look at the picture, the less static it seems. The image appears to be rotating, even though it's actually not moving, not even a bit. This illusion occurs as a result of your eyes reacting to the size variations of the circles and interacting color contrasts. Wow, isn't this image bright and pretty? But don't stare at it for too long. It can give you a slight headache and make your eyes hurt. 
Anyway, now that I've warned you, doesn't it seem to you that all these rings are rotating in opposite directions? I know this effect is extremely strong, but I promise it's not an animated GIF. It's a perfectly still image, but the design and colors make it look as if the rings are moving. Hey, look at this 3D purple landscape. Isn't it charming? The only problem is that, I bet you've already guessed, this is not a 3D image. It's the unusual bright pattern that creates this illusion. Here's another 3D illusion. This time, it's a checkerboard that seems to be bulging. Look at it attentively. The squares are perfectly straight. Their borderlines are parallel and perpendicular. But your brain insists this image is domed. The explanation is connected with the dots. They don't actually touch the borders of the squares. There's always a narrow margin, but your brain interprets those margins like lines, which messes up with your perception. And instead of the right angles, some of them seem acute while others appear obtuse. In this image, all of the edges are either vertical, horizontal, or at a 45 degree angle. But does it seem this way to you? I bet your answer is no. And there's one more thing you can do with this image to make it even cooler. Pause this video so that the image is static and move your scroll bar up and down. It'll appear that the illusion also has some element of motion to it. Awesome! Now, how about we try to figure out what makes it possible for optical illusions to trick our mind? I mean, you know 100% that what your eyes are telling your brain is wrong. But you just can't make yourself stop seeing it. Scientists are sure that sometimes our brain may unconsciously bend our perception of the world to meet our expectations. It fills in the gaps using your past experiences. In other words, it's not your eyes that play tricks on you. It's the way your brain interprets the image sent by the eyes. As an expert said, an optical illusion is a mismatch between the visual impression of the actual properties of the object. Anyway, my favorite illusion is the one with bright rotating circles. What about you? Share your opinion in the comments. Wow, you'll have five seconds for each of the illusions. Get ready for your mind to be bent. Can you tell which of the two yellow lines is longer? Seems obvious to me. Oh wow, I was wrong. None of them is longer. They are exactly the same length. This is a Ponzo illusion, not a Ponzi scheme. Your brain judges an object's size based on its background. Here, your brain decides the upper line that's further away has to be longer to catch up with the line that's closer. Here's another one for you. Do you think these lines are parallel to each other? Yep, they perfectly are. Again, your brain judges them based on their surroundings. All those short intersecting lines make you believe the longer lines are messed up. What about the red lines in this image? Are they straight or curved? This is the herring illusion. The seemingly curved lines are perfectly straight and parallel to each other. The background makes you think otherwise. How many colors can you see here? Did you get red, purple, and green? In that case, you're all wrong. If you zoom in on this illustration, you can see all the spheres are of the same color. The stripes in the foreground make you believe the spheres are of different colors, too. If you remove that foreground from the image, you'll see all the spheres are beige. Welcome to Ames Room. Nothing is impossible here. Which of these two people do you think is larger? An Ames Room only seems to be a normal rectangular construction. It has slanted walls and an inclining ceiling and floor. The right corner is closer to you than the left corner. Your brain is used to rectangular rooms, so it corrects the image for you. 
The room seems normal, and the people inside seem weird. How many prongs do you think this trident has? The correct number is 3. Nah, just kidding. That would be too obvious. The empty space between the prisms forms the central prong. Take a closer look at the top of the prongs. There are just two openings. Can you tell what animal is hiding here? The secret here is to shake your head back and forth. Or you can zoom out on the image. When you see the tiny version of it, it's obvious there's a cat hiding behind all those lines. Now, focus on one point of this image for at least 15 seconds. Don't think of anything else, just keep looking. Can you see the image disappearing? It happens because the neurons in your brain filter information. They decide what's essential and what's useless. When you focus on one point, your brain receives no new information. Your peripheral vision takes new data from the surrounding white background and adapts the graphic to it. Here's the next illusion for you. Can you tell if the circles are moving or standing still? This image isn't animated. It's an example of a peripheral drift illusion that makes you see still images as moving ones. When you stare at one part of the image without blinking, that part stops moving. Can you count all the black dots in this image? Three, four, six? There are 12 of them, but you can't see them all at once. That's because your peripheral vision fails you at tasks like this. What do you see in this image? If you're sure there are some lines and a light blue circle in the middle, you're wrong. The background is entirely white. You see the non-existent light blue circle because your brain adds color into the bare negative spaces. What about this one? What colors are these funky shapes? Just like in the previous illusion, they're all empty and white. That's a watercolor illusion. Your brain fills in the shape that has a bright line and a darker line at its borders with a brighter color. Now, can you tell if this image is 3D? It's perfectly flat. The white shade in the middle creates the bulge effect. If you move closer, you'll notice it spread its luminance. The task here is simple. Follow this spiral from the beginning to the end. Gotcha! You can't do it, because this spiral isn't a spiral. It's made up of concentric circles. Your brain fills in the gaps for you, because it's confused by this crazy background. Can you tell which rectangles are darker? Believe it or not, the rectangles under columns A and B are the exact same color. The surrounding black and white bars make you believe column A is way darker. Can you find the right shadow for this fun couple? No, it's this one. Only one of the locks is unlocked. Can you spot it in 5 seconds? Good job! This drawing is missing one piece. Pick the right one out of the three possible options. Well done! There's a little mouse hiding somewhere between the mushrooms. Your task is to find it. There it is, cute little thing. One of these jellyfish can't swim because it's an air balloon. Can you see it? Well, it does look a lot like a jellyfish. What's that chirping? All birds but one are having a chat. One of them doesn't speak their language. It's a snail right here. I'd love to have some coffee. Please help me find it. Yay, it was hiding here all the time. 
All penguins look alike, but one is more special than the others. Can you spot it? This little guy right here has slightly different eyes. Let's take it one level up. Can you find the odd one out here? You could be a detective with your sharp eyes. One of these plants is slightly different from the others. You have 5 seconds to find it. Here it is. All these moons must produce a lot of light. Pick the odd one out. I knew it. How about a little safari? The zebra on the right is different from its pal on the left in five ways. Can you name them all? I only found three differences. Oh, now I see. How about these lions? Again, there are five not-so-obvious differences between them. Did you get them all? What about these antelopes? Oh, I didn't see the red nose. What a beautiful and peaceful landscape. It's different from the one on the left in five ways. Name them all. Well done! Here are two scenes from a busy city life for you. The task remains the same. I only managed to find three differences here. Let's go see some waterfalls. Something is wrong with the second image. I got it! What about you? The fall is my favorite season. Can you notice five ways these pictures don't match? Fantastic! It's beach time, but you can't relax until you find five differences here. Well, enjoy your well-deserved rest. All right, enough. Moving on. What you see in the next images can tell a lot about your personality. Let's start with this one. If it's a woman reading a book to you, you're a practical and goal-oriented person. You work a lot. You're great at planning and know how to keep your emotions under control. Those who notice Salvador Dali's face, first of all, are artists at heart. Even if your job doesn't have to do with creativity, you find your own ways to express yourself through drawing, writing, or music. If you noticed an armchair first, you never look for easy and obvious solutions in your life. You always surprise everyone else with your unique vision of the world. How about this one? What do you see here? If they're women with umbrellas to you, you've plenty of friends because you're open-minded and mix with new people easily. You enjoy spending time surrounded by others and share everything with them. If it's a sad man's face to you, you're wise beyond your years. Sometimes you need to stop and think about life. At these moments, you prefer to be alone. You don't have that many friends, but you're loyal and always ready to help them. Alright, what can you say about this image? If it's a man sitting down by the water to you, you must be smart and careful with what you do and what you say. You always think twice before making an important decision and rarely regret anything you've done. If you see a face here, you're more emotional than rational. You'll always pick a new and unknown path and never think for too long when you have to make a decision. It's easy to make you cry or smile, but you get over things quickly as well. Here's another illusion for you. If it looks like a couple of playful squirrels to you, you must be a natural explorer. You don't feel happy staying in one place and are always the first to try new things and visit new places. You're active, charismatic, and fun to be around. If you clearly see a woman's face here, you prefer to stick to the plan and don't like surprises. You're a natural leader and great at delegating tasks to others. They respect you and follow your lead. What about this one? 
If it looks like a lifeless forested area to you, you're most likely better at sciences than at arts. You can fix any gadget, or at least carefully follow the instructions to one of those. Your mind is a well-organized chamber. If you instantly saw animals here, you must be into arts and creativity. You don't even know manuals exist. You like to live in the moment and always listen to your heart. Are you planning to change your hair color? Let me help you pick the best option. 1. Do you care about fashion and trends? A. No thanks, I never cared about fashion. B. Yes, I follow all the trends. C. I have a friend who consults me about them. D. Sometimes they pop up on social media so I know something. If you picked A, add 20 points to your score. If you went with B, it's worth 40 points. C brings you 10, and D, 30 points. 2. Which of these color combos would you never wear? A, black and white. B, brown and blue. C, pink and green. D, yellow and gray. Option A brings you 30 points. B is worth 10 points. C brings you 40 points. And D is worth 20 points. 3. You're feeling down. What kind of movie can cheer you up? A. A silly comedy with a happy ending will do. B. Some good old black and white classics. C. An action-packed movie. D. I like cartoons. A brings you 10 points, B is worth 20, C is worth 30 points, D brings you 40 points. 4. You can get one superpower. What's it gonna be? A. I'd love to be invisible. B. Teleportation. C. Super strength. D. The power of convincing people to do anything I tell them. If option A is your choice, you get 10 points. Did you go with B? It's worth 20 points. C brings you 40 points. D is worth 30 points. If you had to eat one meal every day for a month, what would it be? A. Pizza for life. B. Some gourmet food like caviar or foie gras. C. Fruits and veggies only. D. Steaks. I'm a meat fan. Pizza fans get 20 points. Gourmet food lovers get 40 points. Fruits and veggies bring you 10 points. Steaks add 30 points to your basket. 6. When do you feel most productive? A. In the morning. B. After lunch. C. Anytime after coffee. D. In the evening and at night. If option A sounds like the way to go, give yourself 10 points. If B is your choice, you just scored 20 points. In case you went with C, it's worth 30 points. Finally, D gives you 40 points. What is your worst quality? A. I plan everything and get upset when things don't turn out my way. B. I'm too emotional and can cry over the smallest things. C. I'm jealous of the success of others. D. I don't know how to forgive others. A. Adds 10 points to your score. B. Is worth 20. And C. Is a 30-point option. D. Brings you 40 points. 8. Your friend invites you to go on a trip with them. It starts tomorrow. What do you say? A. Impossible! I need to know at least a month in advance. B. I'll think about it and maybe join them later. C. I'll convince them to move the trip one day and go with them. D. Sure thing, I'm packing already. If you chose A for this one, you get 10 points. B is worth 20 points. If you went with C, add 40 points to your score. And D is worth 30. 9. Why did you decide to dye your hair? 
A. To let everyone know I'm extraordinary. B. To change my life. I'm trying to overcome a breakup. C. To help others see that I'm a serious person. D. To spice things up. I've had my current hair color for years. If you picked option A, you just scored 10 points. If you chose option B, it's worth 30 points. C gives you 40 points. And D brings you 20 points. 10. What compliment would you be happiest to hear? A. You look really elegant. B. Are you a business guru? C. You're out of this world. D. You have the most beautiful smile. Option A adds 40 points to your basket. B gives you 30 points. C is worth 10. And D is worth 20 points. If a stylist messed up your hair, what would your reaction be? A. Say you love it, but cry at home. B. Start a massive fight with them to get a refund. C. Without saying anything, just go to some other place to get it fixed. D. Explain what's wrong and give the stylist a second chance. In case you chose option A, 10 points are going your way. B adds 20 points to your score. C is worth 30. And D is a 40-point option. 12. If you won a million dollars, what would you spend it on? A. I'll travel the world. B. A huge new house. C. Gifts for all my friends and family. D. I'll invest in my own business. A brings you 10 points. B is worth 30. C is worth 40 points. D brings you 20 points. You're starting your brand. What will your logo look like? A. A plane or a glow with some inspiring slogan. B. A unicorn and a rainbow. C. Just my initials to make it as business-like as possible. D. A star or a diamond. If you picked a star or a diamond, add 20 points to your score. A unicorn brings you 40 points. A logo with your initials is worth 10. And the globe gives you 30 points. 14. You're moving into a new house. What will you decorate first? A. The living room. B. My bedroom. C. The kitchen. D. I'll start a garden. Option A is worth 20 points. B. Adds 40 points to your basket. C. Brings you 30 points. D is worth 10 points. Dessert anyone? A. Yes, I'll go with a chocolate cake. B. Smoothie, please. C. Nah, I'm good. D. I'd like to have some ice cream. If you picked option A, you just earned 10 points. If you went with B, add 20 points to your basket. Those who chose C earned 40 points. D is worth 30 points. All right, it's time to do some math and sum up all your points. Did you get 160 points or less? Looks like you're pretty happy with your current hair color. Maybe it's not really the time to change it. You're well balanced and pretty happy with your life. If you want to change something, try adding a new color to your wardrobe or curling your hair. In case your final score is between 170 and 240 points, here's your sign to dye your hair blonde. You've always wanted to try it, right? You feel like it can make your life easier and more fun, so go for it! And a bob haircut will make you look even cooler. If you scored somewhere between 250 and 320 points, bright red hair is what you need. It's definitely an attention grabber, and you want it at this point in your life. It will match your fiery personality and will justify all the crazy things you do in life. Try to add some layers to your hair and maybe even bangs. In case your final score is 330 to 400 points, black is the color for you. You're refined, 
classy and stylish. You're also smart and want to take a step up in your career. Black hair and a pixie haircut will help people take you more seriously. It will also give you the self-confidence you need to succeed. Did you get 410 to 480 points? Highlights are the perfect option for you. It's always hard for you to choose just one thing. You're afraid of missing out on something. Luckily, there's always room for compromise, even when it's your own hair. Try braiding it. It will look charming. If you came to the finish line with 490 to 550 points, the best choice for you is electric blue or pink. In fact, you can choose any color as long as it's exotic and bright. You're a creative soul and your everyday routine is making you sad. Add a contrasting hairband or huge clips to make the style even more unique. For those of you who ended up with 560 to 600 points, you're out of this world! Why settle on one color when you can have the entire rainbow on your hair? It sure takes a lot of courage, but you have it in you. As a bonus, you'll attract similar awesome people. They were on their way to the new world when a rendezvous with an iceberg crushed all of their dreams and hopes. There was panic and tears and heartbreaking goodbyes, like that of Jack and Rose. Or was there? Let's see how well you know the real story of Titanic. The love story of Jack Dawson and Rose DeWitt Bukater was inspired by true events. What do you say? Is it a myth or a fact? The most emotional Titanic love story was actually all made up by the screenwriter and director of the famous movie, James Cameron. Some passengers featured in the movie were real though, and by a mere coincidence, there was a Jay Dawson on board. His name was Joseph, not Jack, and he worked as a coal trimmer. The most expensive object lost with the Titanic was a painting by Pablo Picasso. What's your take on this one? It's a myth, another one given to us by the famous movie. The most valuable item that went down with the Titanic was probably a Mary Joseph Blondell painting, created in 1814. Some other valuable items were a violin that belonged to Wallace Hartley, the musician who insisted that they had to play till the very last moment. There was also a 1912 Renault Type CB Coupe de Ville that would now cost millions of dollars, a handwritten manuscript by Joseph Conrad, first edition essays by Francis Bacon, five Steinway grand pianos, and, of course, some fine china plates and cups and first-class passengers' jewelry. The Titanic was the largest and the most luxurious passenger ship of its time. Does it sound real to you? Yep, it's totally true. In April 1912, the Titanic was the largest ship ever built. It was 882 feet long and had a maximum passenger capacity of 2,435 people. That's not a lot compared to the largest cruise ship of today, the Symphony of the Seas. It's just a bit longer than the Titanic, but has more than double the passenger numbers. And yes, no other cruise liner has probably beaten the Titanic in terms of luxury to this day. It costs more than $200 million to build in today's money. The tickets were also quite expensive. Duh! First class tickets ranged in price from $1,700 in today's money for a berth up to $50,000 for one of the two parlor suites. Second class tickets were $700. Third class passengers had to pay between $170 to $460. Most of the passengers of the unsinkable ship managed to survive. True or false? Sadly, it's false. Only 37% of all the passengers actually survived the meeting with the Titanic. Around 61% of the first class passengers, 42% of the second class passengers, and 24% of the third-class passengers made it out alive. The Titanic was passing through the Bermuda Triangle when things went wrong, and that's probably why it sunk. What do you say, myth or reality?
It's 100% a myth. The Titanic never even came close to the Bermuda Triangle. The liner sank about 400 miles south of Newfoundland, which is a huge distance to the north of Bermuda, the infamous area where ships and planes disappear without a trace. We might have the moon to blame for the sinking of the Titanic. True or false? This one is true. The moon heavily affects the tides on Earth. The closer the moon is to the Earth, the stronger the tides are because of the increasing gravity of our satellite. Back in 1912, the moon was so close it made several glaciers in Greenland break apart. Massive chunks of ice that broke off from the glaciers started floating south. The supermoon event came just six minutes after a spring tide. The alignment of the moon, the sun, and the earth that makes their combined gravity reach its peak twice a month. And the day before, our planet had come the closest to the sun that year, which made the gravity even stronger. This mixture of events created perfect conditions for one of the most powerful tides in history. Icebergs breaking off from Greenland's glaciers drift off to the coastal waters of Labrador and Newfoundland, where they often run aground. To move on, they need to either melt and become lighter, or catch a high tide that would carry them further. The 1912's tide was as high as it gets. So, they shifted many shipping routes south because of the huge amount of icebergs. But not the Titanic, of course, as they believed it was unsinkable. It took 4 hours and 40 minutes for the Titanic to sink. What do you say? It's false, and if you're a Titanic expert, you definitely know it was actually 2 hours and 40 minutes. And this was slow enough, given the damage caused by the iceberg. It didn't sink faster, thanks to the ship's construction. There were 16 watertight compartments in the lower part of the ship. They worked as a lifeline. When the iceberg crashed into the hull, it broke into 6 boxes. The Titanic could have stayed afloat only if 4 compartments had been damaged. Water filled the first six compartments within one hour. During this time, the ship tilted slightly to the right side. Then, water began to flood the seventh box when all six boxes were filled. And from that moment, the sinking rate was growing with every second. The ship's bow sank under the water, and then the stern filled up. One of the leading reasons for the Titanic tragedy was signal rockets. True or false? What's your take on it? This one is true! When any ship sinks, the crew members must release red flares. It's a signal to all nearby ships that someone is in trouble. But for an unknown reason, someone put white lights in the Titanic's rocket box. When the ship crashed into an iceberg, the crew members released white flares. Another ship, SS Californian, was nearby at the time. Its captain knew the Titanic was going through a dangerous iceberg area. The crew of this ship didn't see the Titanic in the dark, but they noticed white rockets. Radio communication between the vessels didn't work. The SS Californian operator turned off the receiver. The Californian captain felt that something was wrong, so he sent a Morse lamp signal to the Titanic. But it was too late. The ship was already underwater, so no one could respond. Another ship, Samson, was sailing alongside the Titanic. It drifted with lights off since it was catching seals and that's not legal. When the captain saw the Titanic's white rockets, he thought it was the Coast Guard. So Samson sailed away as fast as they could. They realized they had abandoned the drowning passengers once they made it to Iceland and learned the horrible news. In 1996, one expedition managed to raise the Titanic from the ocean floor. Do you believe it? If you don't, you're right. There were different ideas on how to raise the Titanic, from doing it with compressed air to putting it in wire mesh and covering it with liquid nitrogen, or using giant magnets. The only real attempt to raise the Titanic was made in 1996, and it failed dramatically. The expedition's goal was to lift a part of its hull, weighing about 21 tons. 
It would still have been the largest piece to see the sunlight again, if the operation had succeeded, that is. They lowered four large bags filled with diesel fuel to the bottom of the ocean and attached them to the hull plate. Then, the fuel bags were released and they started lifting the pieces on their own. The plate was about 200 feet below the surface when the weather got rough. The expedition members decided to tow the part to calmer waters around 80 miles away. Long before they reached the towing destination, half of the plate broke off and sank to the bottom again. Two of the lifting bags seemed to have broken loose and the hull went down. The Titanic will most likely crumble to dust halfway up if someone tries lifting it again. So, how many correct answers do you have? Let me know in the comments below. Come on, movie lovers, try to figure out the names of the movies hidden in these emojis. That's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not just the movie, but also Ninja Turtles cartoons and comics will make you want to order an extra large pizza. This is Ocean's Eleven. Which ocean movie is your favorite? Night Night, this is Sleeping Beauty. This movie is a classic now, yet it wasn't a hit at the time when it was first released. Critics thought the movie was too slow and lacked character development. Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. You're right, Uncle Ben. It's Men in Black. Okay, it's not so much about dresses as it is about their number. The movie's name is 27 Dresses. This rom-com was directed by Anne Fletcher in 2008. Moving on to another movie about marriage, but this couple is a bit more extraordinary. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Any fans of Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt here? I'll give you a hint. The next three movies are animated. Frozen. Do you prefer earlier hand-drawn 2D movies by Disney or the latest 3D ones? The answer is cars. Hi, Lightning McQueen. One emoji will be enough for this movie. It's The Little Mermaid. This is Scary Movie. The answer is Night at the Museum. Mamma Mia! I bet you're singing the song in your head right now. This is Thor, or maybe it's Loki in disguise. Better be cautious. The name of this movie is The Boss Baby.
This is Tim Burton's iconic Edward Scissorhands. This movie is already 32 years old. Can you believe it? Titanic. The director, James Cameron, wanted to keep the name of the movie confidential, so he called it Planet Ice. While getting the shots of the iceberg, imagine what would have happened if the movie had been released under that name. Maybe you didn't even need to see the TV emoji. The clown emoji reveals the secret immediately. Yes, this is Joker. Is it a good time to ask you who your favorite actor playing this role is? The answer is Ratatouille. Animators researched the way real produce rots to show a realistic compost pile in the movie. They left different types of food to rot and then took photos. This is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. The next one is an Oscar winner, directed by Clint Eastwood. I'm not giving you any more clues. It's Million Dollar Baby. answer is Finding Nemo. When director Andrew Stanton was pitching his Finding Nemo idea to the chief creative officer of Pixar, he got interrupted. And then he heard this exact sentence, you had me at fish. Wow, lucky Stanton. Here's another movie Johnny Depp acted in. Yep, Pirates of the Caribbean. Did you know the actor had improvised Jack Sparrow's catchphrase, Savvy? The Sound of Music. You change one emoji and it can turn into another movie, Sound of Metal. You're likely to guess what movie it is after seeing The Door and the Lion. It's The Chronicles of Narnia. There's a door in this one too. This is Monsters, Inc. This is Star Wars. Yoda says, For my ally is the Force, and a powerful ally it is. You're right, that's Jaws. Did you know that Steven Spielberg's dogs appeared in the movie? His pooches are famous for playing police chief Brody's dogs. This is Jurassic Park. Here's a fun fact for you. Dinosaurs only have around 15 minutes of screen time in Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park, made in 1993. This is Harry Potter. You probably guessed it immediately after seeing a wand and a bolt of lightning. This one's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's The Silence of the Lambs. By the way, it's the third movie in the Academy Awards history to collect the big five Oscars. Best Picture, Actor, Actress, Director, and Screenplay.
The Lord of the Rings, my precious. It's Blade Runner. The movie is The Wolf of Wall Street. Martin Scorsese's first cut of the movie was four hours. Then he managed to cut it down to three hours. Would you still watch the movie if it was longer? It's The Sixth Sense. And this one is Four Weddings and a Funeral. The answer is King's Speech. Which movie is this? It's called Les Miserables. And what about this one? Train spotting. Can you speak fluent emoji? Continue to test yourself. This time, city names are written with emojis. Loud, music, A, and paw? Of course not. It's Singapore. It's Helsinki. Makes sense, huh? A bag and two people. Look closer. I think those two are relatives. Aha! It's Baghdad. Foot, key, o? No, wait. It's Tokyo. Tokyo. It must be Stockholm. This was a tough one. Congratulations if you guessed it right. Let's continue with some easy ones. Just read it out loud and you'll figure it out immediately. It is Athens. This one's Belgrade. Cities turned out to be a bit harder than movies, I must admit. Tech people, gather up. The next ones are for you. Facebook. Hmm. Super easy. Okay, I'll add some letters in between for this one. It's Snapchat. This is something you probably use every single day. Google search. It's Dropbox. Play Store. All this talking has made me hungry. I'll go to the food court. Guess the fast food chain. Kentucky Fried Chicken.
This one is pretty self-explanatory. It's Taco Bell. The right answer is Subway. It's Wendy's. Popeyes. RB? Nope. Arby's. It's Steak and Shake. Now let's order something to eat. French fries. Instead of fries, you may get some onion rings. Or a hot dog. It's shepherd's pot. Okay, I've just realized I'm not that hungry. French fries and a hot dog were enough for me. I'll jump straight to dessert. Was it a piece of cake or did you find it difficult? It's moon pie. The answer is a fortune cookie. Here's one for you. A person of words and not deeds is like a garden full of weeds. It's cheesecake. Cornflakes. Are you a continental breakfast kind of person? Or do you prefer to spend your morning at the breakfast table full of food to get you through the entire day? Popcorn. The answer is pineapple. Now it's time to guess what drink it is. It's Red Bull. Bingo! Hot chocolate. Right you are. This one is 7 up. Easy, right? Perfect fit for a day at the beach. It's lemonade. It's a green teapot. Just kidding. It's green tea.
This is Mountain Dew. It's literally what you see on the screen. Ice coffee. Let's move on to something harder, shall we? It's Tropicana. Dr. Chili Pepper? No, no, it's just Dr. Pepper. The next one comes with a brand name. Right you are, it's Lipton Iced Tea. This one's Starbucks. Who wants a strawberry frappuccino? This is a banana milkshake. Up for a logo test? I have some new ones for you to challenge your brain. Don't forget to keep your score to see how good your results are. Okay, at first, I'll be showing you two logos. One is correct, and the other is fake. You'll have to tell me which logo is the right one. Deal? Let's go then. Two, one. What about this logo of Dior? Yes, of course, it's this one. Next up, Universal Pictures. So, what side of the globe do you see on their logo? This globe is the correct one. What about the Beatles? What's the correct logo? Right, it's this one, of course. Can you find the original Victoria's Secret logo? Here it is. I'm sure you know which Twitter it is. This one, of course. A small hint for you. It's Chicago Cubs, a baseball team. Do you know which logo is the correct one? It's the left one. A harder one for you. Can you remember Buick's logo? It's a car brand. Here it is. Good job. Moving on. Montclair, what do you pick? That's the one. What about Tog Heuer, a watch brand? That's the one on the right. Find the one and only logo of the Dallas Mavericks. It's the one on the left for sure. Sephora, which way is it supposed to be bent? That's the one. Wikimedia, we all use it, but what is the correct logo? This one. Another easy one, New England Patriots. What's the correct logo? Yes, of course, it's this one. Next up is Columbia Pictures. Which arm should be lifted? Her right arm, which is on the left when you look at her. And the correct logo is the one on the left too. Okay, this one is way harder. 
International Monetary Fund. Where is their logo? This one. Now, I'm going to change the task. I'll be showing you logos and you'll have to recognize them. Do you think you'll manage to guess them all? We'll see. Three, two, one. Here's the first one. We all know what WB stands for, right? Hit it. Correct, it's Warner Brothers. Okay then, any ideas about this one? Yes, that's Beats. Nothing hard yet. Moving on, another easy one for you. Do you recognize it? That's Danone, of course. That's something trickier but still very well known. Any guesses? Marriott, a hotel chain. What do you think this leprechaun represents? That's the logo of the Boston Celtics, a basketball team. Okay, any ideas? It's Cameo, an app where celebrities can send you a shout-out. What about this one? It's Bugatti. This one is way easier. What's this brand? It's the North Face. Okay, another one for you here. What do you say? It's Ocean Spray. Hmm. What do you think this dragon stands for? That's MSI, a Taiwanese technology corporation. Yeah, that was a tough one, sorry. SF, must be San Francisco, right? But San Francisco what exactly? It's the San Francisco 49ers, a football team. Do you think you know this one? It's Alpine, a French brand of racing cars. Any ideas here? That's Zalando. A house turned upside down. Interesting. What is it? The neighborhood, a rock band. That's a simple but cool one. Who does it belong to? Vera Wang, a fashion designer who creates wedding dresses. Do you know this logo? It's Matrix, a professional hair care brand. Does this bull ring a bell? It should, it's Chicago Bulls, a famous basketball team. Do you recognize this brand? It's Cetaphil. This isn't the simplest one either, but well, it can't all be the McDonald's logo. The game is bound to get harder, so what do you say? It's Escada, a luxury clothing brand. What about this one? It's Los Angeles Angels. They play baseball. Yeah, very interesting. A slightly stretched O. Any thoughts? It's 
It's Oakley, a company that makes sunglasses and sports equipment. What about this logo? What is it? That's Sisley, a French luxury cosmetic brand. This one's harder. What is it? It's Purina that produces cat food. Do you know this one? It's General Mills, a food manufacturer. L.A. something. Hmm, it can't be too hard. Los Angeles what? It's Los Angeles Rams, a football team. Do you have any thoughts about this one? That's Macmillan Dictionary. Any ideas about what this logo is? Evanescence, a music band. That's a very important organization. Let's see if you know it. What is it? The Global Fund. Does it ring a bell? That's Bon Jovi. What about this logo? That's the Houston Texans, a football team. What about this logo? Fitbit. Any ideas about this one? That's Strava, an internet service that helps you track your physical activity. What about this one? It's UNESCO, an organization that promotes peace and education. So what do you think this G stands for? Green Bay Packers, an American football team from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Do you know what this logo means? It's HarperCollins, a famous book publisher. What do you think this little cutie is? That's Waze, a navigation app. Well, this one is famous. That's Philadelphia Eagles, of course. Do you know this one? It's Partners in Health, an organization that works to strengthen health systems. You have my respect if you've got it right. And now, are you ready for one more type of task? It's the hardest one. I'll be showing you little pieces of famous logos and you'll have to recognize them. Let's check how attentive you are. Here's the first one for you. Any guesses? It's Tiso, a watch brand. Do you recognize it? That's ACDC, a music band. What are your thoughts? This is CeraVe. Another simple one for you. Hit it. That's Xiaomi. 
Can you recognize what this is? McLaren, a British automotive manufacturer. They produce supercars. Okay, this one's easy. I'm sure you can recognize it. It's everyone's favorite, Pringles. Okay, this one shouldn't be too hard either. Let's see if you get it. Even if you think you don't know it, you do. It's Minecraft. How about this one? I hope you recognize the Nintendo Switch logo. Everyone loves them, so what are they? Of course, these are nerds! Okay, this one's harder. What do you say? That's the Washington Post, a daily newspaper. Another brand you likely know. That's Arizona. Okay, it's something famous, and I wonder if you'll recognize it. What do you say? See, it's Bank of America. That seems impossible. But let's see how good you are with Mission Impossible. What do you think? If you got it right, you're either a genius with photographic memory or consume alarming amounts of Schweppes every day. Okay, another little piece for you. Can you recognize it? That's Chester's. What a cutie. What do you say? Yeah, of course, it's Goldfish. All right, pal, I'm the fashion police here. Yeah, I was going to give you a ticket for those pleats, but hey, no worries. I'm not going to arrest your last season's outfit. I'm here to tell you something new about your personality based on the items you love to wear. Because they can actually tell me who you really are and reveal all your secrets to me. So, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Grab a pen and a paper and keep track of your answers to get the most accurate description at the end. You ready? Then let's begin. Which color palette speaks to you the most? A. Is it going to be this bright one? B. Or maybe this heartwarming B. C. Looks good to me as well. D. Is so pastel. And E. Well, that's something different. Two. What is a pattern you like to wear? A. Floral, but make it more abstract. B. Plaids. C. Stripes. D. Animal prints. E. I like to keep things plain. Three. You're out shopping with your friends at the mall. What's the first item you look at? A. All kinds of jewelry. B. A giant scarf. C. A sleek and expensive bag. D. I head to the makeup section first. I mean, you do. E. Oversized hoodies. Four. What would be your ideal place to live? A. Living the van life would be the dream. B. A cottage inside the woods that's far from any chaos. C. A penthouse on the tallest skyscraper in the city. D. A giant mansion in the burbs. E. An apartment in a brownstone building. Five. What statement do you agree with? A. The clothes I wear usually reflect how I feel during that day. B. I love layering. It also makes me prepared for any kind of weather. C. I don't like changing my style. I stick to what I think looks good on me. D. I always follow the trends and spend my money on designer items. E. I value comfort over style, but I try to look presentable.
6. What is something you will never wear? A. I'll wear it if I feel like it. B. Neon colors. C. Cargo pants. D. Ripped jeans. E. Anything with sequins. Mm Mm-hmm. Seven, what would be your ideal shoes? A, sandals, B, boots, C, loafers, D, high heels, E, sneakers. Eight, what do you think about accessories? A, the more the better. B, I have a necklace I wear every day. It brings me luck. C, an expensive watch is the best accessory. It's also practical. D. I wear diamonds all the time. E. Less is more. 9. How would your friends describe your style? A. Honestly, I don't know and don't care. B. A mix of dark academia and cottage core. C. They tell me I look sharp. D. I don't know, but I hope they like it. E. They would say I'm a minimalist. 10. What do you tend to wear when traveling? A. Whatever I find lying on the ground in my messy room is fine. B. A cozy sweater and jeans. C. A suit. D. Full makeup. E. A t-shirt and sweatpants. 11. What city would you like to visit? A. Rio B. Edinburgh C. New York D. Monte Carlo E. Copenhagen 12. What is your favorite Friday night activity? A. Going out dancing with my friends B. Watching a new movie, preferably at home C. Dining at a Michelin star restaurant. D. I prefer Sunday brunches over Friday night activities. E. Gathering with friends at somebody's place. 13. Where do you like to shop? A. Wherever I feel like. B. I shop online and check vintage stores. C. I usually visit a tailor for custom-made clothes that fit me perfectly. D. I shop at designer stores only. E. Retail stores have everything I want. 14. What is something you would like to try? A. Piercings or tattoos would be fun. B. Adding cloaks to my wardrobe. C. Wearing brighter colors from time to time. D. Staying in my PJs all day. E. I would like to try the futuristic style one day. 12 pal, that's it for questions. Now, let's see what your style tells me about you. If you have mostly A's, it's fair to say you have an edgy style. You're a bold person who likes to show your personality. You're comfortable in your own skin. You aren't afraid to be different and don't like being bound by rules and restrictions. You're a bit of a rebel. That's why you don't really care whether a shirt goes well with a coat or if the color of your bag matches the color of your shoes. The word impossible doesn't exist in your vocabulary. You are very creative and smart. You have an unconventional way of thinking. You are also a dreamer and a bit of a romantic. That's why you think if you put your mind to it, there is nothing you can't achieve. We need more free spirits like you. If you have mostly Bs, you're a nostalgic one. That's why you enjoy the fashion of the past decades. You try to interpret it in your life and create more modern looks with those old trends. You value wisdom the most. That's why you love to read lots of books and learn new things. You're a mysterious person who doesn't let people in easily. It takes time for you to trust and open up. But those who are a part of your life are so lucky because there is nothing you won't do to protect them or make them feel loved and happy. Your favorite season is likely the fall, and you're probably a night owl. You don't like being in crowded places. It drains your energy. 
you prefer spending time alone in nature. It makes you feel powerful. Try to meet more people and give them a chance to get to know you. They might surprise you. If you have mostly C's, you're a let's-get-down-to-business type of person. And you show that with your formal clothes. You value power and like to have control over things. It's important for you to stay on top of everything. You get angry if you feel like people are keeping something from you. Minor inconveniences cause you great distress. You're most likely an early bird who is ambitious and hardworking. You want to be successful in everything you do and expect so much from yourself. Now, keep in mind that you're only human and such high expectations put you under a lot of pressure. You don't have to have a solution for everything all the time. It's okay to fail every now and then. Those who truly love you will still accept you, even if you don't achieve greatness. Now, if you have mostly Ds, your wardrobe is sophisticated and classy. You always dress well and look polished no matter where you're going. Even if that means you're overdressing for the occasion, you never compromise your style. You love being the center of attention. You care about what people think of you. And that's why you tend to buy stuff that you think they would like. You may seem like a snob to some people, but actually, you have a very kind and big heart. Those who are close to you know that you love to help others whenever you can and try to bring out the best in them. Don't be afraid to show people who you really are and live your own truth. You don't need to please them all the time with the way you look, talk, or act. You're enough, and you're loved. If you have mostly ease, you have a casual style. You like to keep things simple. You often choose sporty clothing items because they make you feel comfortable and relaxed. You're a bit shy and don't like drawing too much attention to yourself. You like being around people, especially your close ones. You feel much better and happier when you know you belong to a group. You're a good communicator and bond well with other people. However, you also value your personal space. So sometimes, sitting at a cafe alone, sipping coffee, and observing others is one of your favorite activities. You're also athletic, and you take good care of your health. So, was the description you got accurate? Let me know, pal, in the comments below. And hey, I'll let you off with a warning this time. Lose the pleats. Hey! How about we create your psychological portrait using optical illusions? You game? The rules are simple. Just remember the first thing you saw in the picture. Now, if you see a horse in this picture, you're a very valuable friend. You have excellent communication skills, and you're very confident and reliable. But if the first thing you saw here is the horse's head, it may mean you're critical of everything, and the opinion of others can't throw you off the path. The next illusion. Those who saw a crocodile here love a quiet life and don't like to open up to something new. But if you saw a boat, you're more creative than other people and pay attention to small details. Those who see a young woman here have an analytical mind and use their left brain more. If you see an old man, you're likely to be a very gentle and sensitive person who can be very empathetic to other people. You're more creative, and you use the right side of your brain. The white pillars in the picture mean you like comfort and safety. But you should leave the comfort zone to gain more experience and achieve something new. But if the first thing you see is the silhouettes of two men, then you're the kind of person who doesn't sit in place and is ready to move constantly. Are these flowers or a woman's face? If it's flowers for you, then you appreciate the world you live in and just love nature. And if the first thing to draw your eye was a woman's face, then you have a great ability to highlight details from the environment that will help you to make the right decision. If an orange explosion is painted for you here, you have incredible leadership qualities. But if the first thing you see in this picture is black fingers, then you're a very compassionate, generous, and kind person. Hey, did you see two faces here? You're an extrovert. You're social, and you're constantly thinking about other people. But you also get influenced easily, so try to surround yourself only with good people. But if you see a candlestick here, you're the exact opposite. You think more about yourself than about other people, and you like to sit at home rather than having noisy parties with a bunch of people. Ooh, this one is scary. If you see a skull here, 
It means it's hard for you to make decisions and move forward. But you need to find the courage and overcome the circumstances. It's the only way for you to become stronger. And if you see a woman, you're probably feeling like a squeezed lemon, both emotionally and physically. Perhaps you have just ended a difficult period in your life. In any case, stay on the bright side. Now, if you see trees here, you must be an ambitious person who loves to bring everything to perfection. If you saw the roots at the first moment, it means you're a progressive person who strives for improvement. If the whole picture looked like dark lips to you, then you're a person who doesn't like to go deep into something and study too much. Hey, were those chocolate lips? Now, what do we have here? Is it a river and a cliff? Then you're an optimist who adapts easily to the changes in life. But if the first thing you see is a white cat, then you like stability, and you're in an emotional and mental balance. And you're a cat lover, of course. And if you see a face here, then you're a very creative person. You see a new opportunity in every detail of the world, and you're very curious. Whoa! Is this an explosion? Then you're easily scared. You often feel fear of something new and unknown. You may even be in conflict with yourself. But if you see a passionate kiss in the smoke, then you value relationships and family the most in life. This is the highest priority for you. Ooh, cute bears! If you saw them first, then you can easily solve problems. You see a picture from far away, notice all the details, and can find the best solution. But if for you, this picture is a mountain landscape, then you are a more intuitive person. You're guided by your sixth sense when decision-making. Are you a realist? If you saw a big blue cat here, then yes. You don't have much fantasy, but you see the world as it is, and it helps you make plans on how to conquer it. If a little mouse hits your eyes first, you can see the positive even in the worst-case scenario. For you, the glass is always half full. The next illusion. If you see a girl at the window, then be careful. This may suggest that you expect something unpleasant to happen. And you're also probably an impulsive person. If you see a skull here, then you're pessimistic. Your friends may call you a cynic, but you consider yourself a realist. Creativity against analytics? Hmm, what do you see? If the red saxophonist is the first thing you see, then you are a person who likes to systematize and analyze information. You must be good at math and foreign languages. And if you see a portrait of a woman here, then you're an emotional and creative person. Is it a bird? Then you're a daydreamer, though a little absent-minded. But you strive to make the world a better place and invent ways to do so. And if there's a big face of a lion here, then you're a very brave person who's ready to face their insecurities and come out the winner of any fight. And here we have crocodiles? Then maybe you like to be in charge and manage your life. Orders from other people make you suffer because you're a natural leader. If you see a bird in the middle, you're ready to help others. You're reliable and friendly. Okay. If the first thing you see here is a car, then you're a person who appreciates their freedom. You like to break away on an unexpected journey, meet new people, and see new places. If you saw a person with binoculars, it means you have an analytical type of thinking, and you like to look at things from afar, often missing small details. And although you can absorb a lot of visual information, you should focus on the smaller things too. If you saw the letter A, then congratulations! You have a very sharp vision, just like an eagle. So hey, you can dive on a salmon. And you have well-developed intuition. Oh, this one is harder. If you're a girl and you've seen a man's face here, then either you're looking for a partner or your current partner is a priority in your life and you feel a strong emotional connection with him. But if you see a woman's face, then you feel comfortable and self-sufficient. Guys who saw a man's face are concerned about relationships with other men, whether they are colleagues, friends, or even other guys in the gym. And if you see a female face, you're looking for your love. But take your time, or else you may push too hard. 
This is a test for Super Sherlock. Of course, it's two squirrels, right? Well, that means you're pretty lazy, and you don't get too much into details. Now, tilt your head a little to the left. Now, you can see a woman's face. But if that's what you saw from the beginning, then you're an incredibly attentive person who can get along well with other people. And now, we will determine your psychological age. If the first thing you saw was old people's faces, then you have already lived a long and colorful life. You definitely have something to remember. But if you see a young couple sitting next to each other, then you're young and all the fun is waiting for you. Now, be ready to give a quick answer. Remember what you see first. Let's go! If you notice a smiling face, you're an optimist. If it's the open book, you're smart and have a well-developed intuition. If it was roses, you're calm and kind. The tilted cross means that you're faithful. Balloons mean cheerfulness and good imagination. If the first thing you saw was a heart, then you're gentle and affectionate. The lion's face means that you're fearless. And if at first you notice the tie, you're determined and diligent. Oh, and if you saw the ice cream cone, then it's time for an eye exam, because there wasn't one in the picture. (laughs) That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Keep track of your points and check your results at the end of the test. Do you like playing tricks on people? A. Yes, but only my close friends. They know I don't mean it. B. Everyone all the time. C. Never. I'm afraid to hurt their feelings. D. Only if they play tricks on me. If you picked option A, you just earned 20 points. If you went with B, add 40 points to your basket. Those who chose C earned 10 points. D is worth 30 points. Which of these animals do you associate yourself with? A. Panther. I'm also posh, fast, and can always protect myself. B. Cute puppy. I wouldn't survive a day without my family. C. Kangaroo. I'm one of a kind and you can't approach me easily. D. Chameleon. I can fit into any surroundings. All panthers out there get 20 points. Puppies at heart can add 10 points to their score. Kangaroos scored 30, and chameleons got 40 points. If you turned into a superhero, what would you do first? A. Save the world. B. Travel the world. Being a superhero involves flying, right? C. Meet my favorite celebrity. D. Use my superpowers to produce as much money as I've always wanted. Option A brings you 30 points. B is worth 20. C is worth 10 points. D gives you 40 points. It's your birthday, and your friends surprise you with your dream car. How long will you be happy about it? A. A week, perhaps, until the joy fades away. B. Forever. It's the gift of a lifetime. C. It's no big deal. It takes way more than that to make me happy. D. I won't accept it. It's too much, and they know it. If you picked A, add 20 points to your score. If you went with B, it's worth 10 points. C brings you 40 points, and D, 30 points. What's your favorite kind of weather? A. Beach weather. Sunshine, no clouds, heat. B. I love snow. Playing outside or staying at home on a snowy day makes me happy. C. Rainy weather. The sound of it helps calm me down. D. Extreme weather. Thunderstorms, tornadoes, sandstorms, they make life more interesting. If you prefer sunshine, add 20 points to your basket. Snow fans earn 10 points. Rain fans get 40 points. Those who love extreme weather earn 30 points. 
What movie would you choose to star in? A. Drama. I know how to play it because I live it. B. My sense of humor and irony will help. C. Superhero movie. I even know what my superhero costume will look like. D. I want to star in a detective movie and solve mysteries. Option A brings you 20 points. B is worth 10 points. C brings you 30 points. And D is worth 40 points. How do you feel before an important event? A. Nervous and scared. I don't want to let anyone down. B. Excited. I love to test myself and triumph. C. Calm and focused. That's what helps me always win. D. Useless. I always feel like others are putting more in it. If option A is your choice, you get 10 points. Would you rather go with B? It's worth 30 points. C brings you 40 points. D is worth 20 points. What activity would you like to exclude from your routine for good? A. Washing, drying, and brushing my hair. It's a waste of time. B. Having to pick my outfits. Let a robot do it for me. C. Cooking. It's definitely not my thing. D. Cleaning. Things turn into a mess again too soon. If option A sounds like the way to go, give yourself 10 points. If B is your choice, you just scored 30 points. In case you went with C, add 40 points to your basket. Finally, D brings you 20 points. Which sense do you rely on the most? A. Smell. I could create my own perfumes. B. Hearing. I can hear someone whisper across the street. C. Sight. They say I have eyes on my back. D. Taste. It has never let me down. If you went for sense of smell, you get 40 points. Those who trust their hearing get 10 points. If you have an eagle eye, award yourself with 20 points. Your sense of taste brings you 30 points. You're arranging a first date with someone you really like. What is it gonna be? A. I'll rent a movie theater or a planetarium just for the two of us. B. I'll cook some fancy food and learn to play some musical instrument. C. I'll take them to an escape room and let them show how smart and brave they are. D. Huh? I don't arrange dates. Others try their best to impress me. Option A brings you 10 points. B gives you 30 points. Option C is worth 20 points. If you chose option D, here are your 40 points. What do you do when you're angry? A. Ignore everything and everyone. I need some time to cool down. B. Read my favorite book or listen to some music. C. Cry my heart out. It helps me restart my system. D. Think it over. I gotta understand what made me so angry and how to avoid it. Option A adds 40 points to your basket. Option B gives you 30 points. C is worth 10 points. And D is worth 20 points. Your friend's having a housewarming party. What do you bring to it? A. Some food or something else practical will do. B. I'll write a poem or make a fun collage and frame it to make it memorable. C. I'll just ask them what they need for the new house. D. Hmm. Nothing. My presence is the best gift. In case you chose option A, give yourself 10 points. B adds 30 points to your score. C is worth 20, and D is a 40-point option. What time do you usually go to bed? A. 10 p.m. 11 p.m. at latest. I keep it healthy. B. 2 a.m. or so. And then I wake up around 2 p.m. C. What is sleep? I never get any. D. 8 p.m. I need my beauty sleep.
Healthy sleepers get 40 points. Night owls get 30 points. Those who never sleep win 20 points. Those who go to bed early get 10 points. Which of the following sounds like the absolute worst idea to you? A. Never leaving my hometown for the rest of my life. B. Doing all the work and watching others get promoted. C. Have someone else pick my hairstyle for me. D. Never knowing my schedule. I can't live without a good plan. Those who went with option A get 30 points. Option B is worth 40 points. C brings you 20 points. D is worth 10 points. Pick a color combination you'd never get tired of wearing. A. Black and white. I'm classy. B. Gray and pink. Official with a playful twist. C. Orange, purple, emerald with a sprinkle of blue. I dress brightly. D. Stripes, polka dot, paisley. It's not about colors, it's about patterns. In case you chose option A, add 40 points to your score. B brings you 10 points. C brings you 30 points. D is worth 20 points. Time to sum up your points. If you ended up with 150 to 230 points, your hidden superpower is invisibility. You can always disappear from an event you don't like smoothly. If you don't want anyone to notice you at a lecture or a business meeting, they never will. Did you get 240 to 330 points? Congrats, you have the superpower of flying. You're doing things way faster than other people. Sometimes they ask you to share your secret of being here and there at the same time. You fly from place to place and are never late. You're always the first to try out a new trend and visit a new place. In case you scored 340 to 420 points, you're a super brain. You're one of the smartest people around. You can figure out the solution to any problem in a matter of seconds. When life gets too easy, your brain gets bored. You have an excellent sense of humor and irony. You like to plan things, and your plan always works out. Those who got 430 to 510 points, you have the superpower of reading minds. You have a lot of friends and make new ones easily. You always feel when something's wrong with them and know exactly how to help. You can also make others change their mind if it's in your interest. If your final score is 510 points or more, you're a money magnet. You never run out of it. The second you realize you could use some more cash, opportunities make it float your way. You know how to save and how to spend money. Hey there! Are you ready to get your mind blown by some absolutely stunning optical illusions? Or do you want to check how easily your mind can get tricked? Then watch our 11 optical illusions and let me know which impressed you the most. So here's the first one. Look at it attentively. What do you see here? Most people are sure they're looking at a 3D sphere on a patterned monochrome background. Or maybe you even feel that the ball is suspended in the air in front of some flat surface in reality, this is a 2D image. The illusion occurs because of how the elements of the pattern are placed. Another 3D image, which is actually totally flat. I don't know about you, but it seems to me that I'm looking at sand dunes colored in a dazzle of zebras. But no, this effect occurs thanks to the different thickness and position of the stripes. Now, look at this picture. Don't take your eyes off of it even for a moment. See? The circles are moving. It's a popular motion illusion. One of the coolest things about it is that it grinds to a halt if you look at only one part of the image. Try it out! And if you start looking around, it begins to move again. Is it magic? These circles might look simple and unassuming at first, but try moving your head back and forth while keeping your focus on the dot in the center of the image. Do you see that the circles formed by the rhombi start to rotate? When you're tilting your head towards the screen, they move in one direction. When you get farther from the image, they move in the opposite direction. 
And isn't that cool? How about something even more baffling? Look at this image. This grating is moving vertically, right? Not really. It's moving diagonally. This illusion occurs when a diagonally striped pole rotates horizontally around its vertical axis. To the viewer, it appears as though the stripes are moving downward rather than around.